time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. All right, we are at number 17 of the 2022 49ers roster countdown. And this player, rookie last year, going into his second year, Talanoa Hufunga. Man, according to 49ers Twitter, he is either amazing or awful. There is no in-between take on Talanoa, unfortunately, uh, as most things go in social media. Uh, they're hot or cold. Uh, me, I have been pretty much in the red-hot category since he was drafted. Very similar to the 49ers. Um, if you look at... The 49ers have um, a demarcate a markation that they use on certain players called gold helmet guys, where they fit the culture, they fit the play style, the scheme, and the upside. The 49ers have only drafted two gold helmet players in the past two drafts. One was Trey Lance, the other Talano Hufunga. They believe in him to the fullest. Uh, it's not even close. So what we're going to do today, we're going to go through the background. We're going to go through some college film. Uh, we're going to see uh, the biggest player of the year against the Green Bay Packers as well. Everything that you need to know and why the 49ers basically chose Talanoa over Jaquaski Tart, um, who is beloved by the faithful, myself included. And I hate that. Uh, unfortunately, this is the way that it goes sometimes. Um, but Let's start this conversation off with Kyle Shanahan talking about why he liked Talano Hufunga. Hufunga is love him at safety. It's like a linebacker. Um, you know, it's his mentality is uh, he's an old school badass, as we say. So <laughs> we're, we're excited to get him here, um, see what he can do on special teams. Hopefully, he can earn a role there first to start. Um, we'll try him at safety. Um, if it's better at linebacker, that'll eventually happen too. But we're excited to get the football player. Old school badass. Man, that is awesome. Um, hopefully one day somebody will say that about my, yours truly. <laughs> um, now, he's a safety, as you heard Kyle say. Could go to linebacker, but they have decided. Um, he took every single rep with the ones through mini camp, training camp. He's a starter. This dude, very similar to Aaron Banks, very similar to Trey Lance. These rookies who kind of sat and played some that are all the way in. That's not true with Aaron Banks, but it was with Trey Lance. He's jersey number 29, six foot, 200 pounds, going to be 23 years old this year, and is entering into his second season. Played high school ball at Crescent Valley High School in Corvallis, Oregon. Um, don't know how he got out of Oregon State's uh, grasp there. But he was a three-star recruit, chose USC, the Trojans, and was a communications major there. Now, his background is interesting. As we jump into this, I'm going to throw up some film here. Um, this is film back um, whenever he was in college at USC, Defensive Player of the Year for the Pac-12 this year. Um, so you'll see him kind of bouncing around all over the place. And if you want to go back and watch all of his college tape, if you want to watch all of his tape from this year, uh, Patreon's a place to be. Patreon.com slash 49ers Rush Podcast. You can, uh, along with just these clips that you're seeing here, my commentary, breaking down every single play. Play, um, you know, footwork, scheme, assignments, all those things that's there over on Patreon. Best way to support the show as well. Uh, plus, you'll get every single offensive and defensive and snap from the upcoming year broken down weekly on college uh, through the All-22 coaches tape. Now, background. He grew up on a farm. Um, very hardworking since he was young. And if you look at his, his dad as well, obviously he has, you know, um, what's it called? The Polynesian... Uh, connection with USC and he even had a quote that he chose USC because it's basically a Polynesian school they've had so many great football players go through there um, and you know it went all the way back to his father his father was raised in the village of Pia I believe I'm pronouncing that correct one of Tonga's largest islands raising cows pigs chickens what's even more interesting than that is his dad's from the exact same village as a former 49er Pita Tama Paneu, if you remember him, right? The defensive edge uh, specialist. I believe he was out of Utah. So very small, tight-knit community. And on top of that, he works with, the Talano Hufanga works with in the offseason, guess who? Yeah, perhaps the best, you know, Polynesian player of all time and one of the greatest safeties of all time um, every single year. Yeah, you guessed it. Another USC guy that, uh, Troy Polamalu, that continues to help him out. Also, on top of that, whenever he got drafted by the 49ers, 
Ronnie Lott reached out to him, um, which is incredible. Ronnie Lott, again, USC guy, tried to reach out to Toledoa, but he didn't have social media. So it was a challenge to get a hold of him, but they finally did. In high school, he was a four-year starter at safety, started as a true freshman, same at quarterback and wide receiver, and he was an all-state basketball player as well. Um Track was great as well, ran at 22.7 in the 200, which is interesting because, you know, whenever we get into the metrics that he put up at the combine, he is not a speedster. He's not fast, but he, he maintains a good level of speed. He just doesn't have that top gear, um, but his acceleration is great. Family of football players, brother TJ played linebacker at Oregon State. Uh, cousins Marlon and Thule played defensive line at USC. Was named Polynesian High School National Player of the Year. Two-time All-State pick in high school. I mean, just all over the place. Now, if you look at what he accomplished in college, good gosh. 2020 Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. AP Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. All-American first team. I mean, you, whatever accolades you want, this guy had it all. Um, I mean, finalist for the Law Impact Trophy, semifinalist for the Witten Award. And again, as we mentioned, I think probably one of the most unheralded awards, but most important for us, gold helmet guy. The 49ers love this guy um, so much. And so I, I just think it's, I think it's very important to understand – how highly like you could we're watching the film now if you're watching this with us in youtube he's in and back player there's no doubt about it does he have holes in his game sure but the thing that you have to keep in mind the 49ers believe in this kid they're his biggest fans um whenever he got drafted in his very first press conference for the 49ers talked about how he wanted to be an all pro special teamer it just He's a coach's dream, man. They, like the mentality, the makeup, the fearlessness on the field. It's exactly what you want. It, the way you design a player, if you could jump inside their hip brain and <laughs> control the levers, you get Talanoa. Um, and so I, I don't know, man. I really, really do love this kid. I think that he's incredible. If you look at his metrics, okay, in the combine, which let's be honest, this is an issue. 4.6440, which is not good. It's not awful either. He doesn't have top end speed, but instincts, instincts, instincts. Um, three cones, 6.96. That's great. Uh, that's like Debo shiftiness. Uh, vertical, 35 and a half. That's great. His athletic profile didn't match up with a lot of safeties that were, you know, active in the NFL, which is a concern. That's why he fell to where he was uh, in the fifth round. But the athletic play cop does match Luis Delmas, who's a wide receiver. James Washington, who's a wide receiver for the Cowboys now. Like, there are pro athletes with his physical skills and makeup. Not a lot of safeties, though. And so that's why you heard the comment, well, if he don't work at safety, then we'll move him to linebacker, which the 49ers are notorious for doing with uh, safety converts to linebackers. But I don't think so. I think his instincts are good enough and his playmaking skills are good enough to stay at that safety spot. Uh, my draft write-up on his film, which, again, we're watching now, mean and tough. Uh, it's easy to see. He will be a high-energy player in the NFL, will be good in the locker room. Those two things came across big time. High-volume tackler. We saw that in his first year in the NFL as well. Um, always around the ball. Like One of my favorite things whenever I watch tape of a linebacker or a safety, are they by the ball at the end of the play? And with Talanoa, I kept writing, he has to make contact with the ball carrier every play. Like, you'll see some plays where the ball carrier goes down right before him. He'll still walk up and touch him while he's down on the ground. Like, he has to hit the ball carrier every single freaking play. Like, you can just tell it's it's a very important part of who he is. Um, instincts, unreal. Injuries are an issue. This was the only player that was brought in through free agency or drafted last year in 2021 that had injury concerns. Um, and here we go. Let's go through them. Right collarbone 2018. Right collarbone 2019. Whenever he heard it the second time, they went and installed a steel plate, um, which fixed that, but then dislocated the right shoulder in 2019. Concussion in 2019. 
Um, so he's got some issues with his right shoulder. There's no doubt about it. The steel plate seems to solve the collarbone issue, but he kept hit with it, dislocated his shoulder. You know, that's quote unquote soft tissue. We'll see if that comes back. Um, but yeah, man, it, it, it's, it's something that the 49ers were able to basically say, all right, cool. And took him in the fifth round. Ball skills are good. Four interceptions in college, four forced fumbles, eight pass defense, um, six and a half career sacks, 16 and a half tackles for loss. Yeah. All over the place. I wrote in my notes, he was Kyle use check on defense. What do I mean by that? Just a better football player that he is a safety that brings incredible high energy and makes everyone around him better. That's what I felt watching his tape. He was drafted in the fifth round, pick number 180 overall. So, like, again, this it's a back-end player. It's a day three player. Now, what did he do for the 49ers? Okay, um, I'll, I'll pull down this the tape here. What did he do for the 49ers this year? Because I think that's what's important. He played in 15 games, had three starts, 32 tackles, two pass breakups, one tackle for loss, one quarterback hit. Okay, cool. Um, you know, what's that mean? All those things. You, let's provide some context and clarity to what those numbers mean. He started taking snaps away from a healthy Jaquaski Tart during week seven. And th this is important because the 49ers chose him over Tart. And you could have had Tart cheap. I mean, he got like a $2 million a year deal for Philadelphia, like for the Eagles. And I'm happy for him. I hope he balls out. I love Tart. I, I kind of wish we would have brought him back, but it's also time for the new. Let's see what happens. So they chose Talanoa, the 49ers did, not necessarily me, so don't get mad at me. They chose him over Tart. We'll have to see if that plays out, if it pays off. Um, now, I will say this, Tart did get his job back during the playoff run. Um, he kind of went in and dominated snaps. Uh, Hufunga would come in on dime packages and help out over the top. That was about it. But if we just look at Tart last year versus Hufunga last year, okay, let's do this. Tart, 56 tackles, Hufunga, 25. Now, Tart had almost twice as many snaps, but pay attention to the ratios. I think that's what's important. Tart, 12 missed tackles. Hufunga, five. If we break down those percentages, Tart had a 13.2 missed tackle percentage to Hufunga, his rookie year, 9.1. He tackles better. Uh, that came across in film in college. He came across in film uh, during his rookie year, tackling at a much higher percentage than Tart was, and I think in year seven or eight. I think that matters. Tart, 24 solo stops. Huff, 10. Um, completion percentage allowed, 56% completion percentage for Tart, 64 for Hufunga. That's one of the areas that I think is going to be underlined and will need to be increased if Hufunga is going to be that guy in the future. Touchdowns allowed, two touchdowns allowed by both of them. Uh, one pass breakup for Tart, two for Hufunga if you go into the playoffs. Um, four penalties against Tart, zero against Huff. Here's my analysis of those numbers. 49ers defense values consistency over playmaking ability. And to be honest, that playmaking ability, I probably delete that from just these two players. But you can see it all three levels of the defense. The reason why Samson Ebukam gets so many snaps, no missed tackles. No missed tackles. No missed assignments. He might not be the most flashy or explosive player or sexiest player out there. He does not make mistakes. Look at Drake Greenlaw getting snaps over Aziz Al Shire when they're both healthy. Why? Drake Greenlaw is a better tackler. Drake Greenlaw makes fewer mistakes. Aziz makes more splashy plays. But D'Amico and Kyle Shanahan value consistency over explosives. That is what's so important. And that's why I think they finally chose Huff over Tart. Now, what's he going to do this year? Uh, well, first, before we do that, we've got to show the biggest play of the entire 2021 season. And I'll, I'm just going to play. Here we go. Yeah, wait for him to lift his head and then just charge through him. Man, right there. Get that paw up. Awesome job. They can't find the ball. Look at these guys. They're like John Travolta in Pulp Fiction. I don't know where it's at. Where's the radio system? 
Everybody's looking for the ball. There it is. There's the ball. And typically, you want to stay away from it because as soon as that ball passes the line of scrimmage, if you touch it, it's a live ball. So if you touch it and the Packers get it, they get a first down. But, man, whenever you are that close, you freaking go get the touchdown. Spot play from Talanoa. And, again, like you hear it, the double thud, right, and you coach it. If you hear a double thud, it's live look around time. You figure out where this ball is, and you can see everybody. Look at everybody's. Like, look at the, all different directions. Where's the ball? Where's the ball? Where's the ball? There's the ball. Go get the ball. Go get the ball. <laughs> what a play. The only touchdown from the 49ers all game. And it came. All right, we'll stop it there. But if you enjoy clips like that, guess what? Every single offense and defensive play from the entire last two years and upcoming year, it's available on Patreon. Patreon.com slash 49ers Rush Podcast or just Google 49ers and Patreon. Uh, we're the first link that pops up always. Now, I'm excited for what comes next. But let's be real. It's not a guarantee. There are two positions on the 49ers defense moving into 2022 that are question marks. One is this number two safety spot, which Hufunga's got the first crack at it. There's no doubt in my mind. The other is the slot, the slot corner. Um, Darquez Denard seems to be leading the pack there early. Samuel Womack, when he can he take over? I don't know. But if you can just get adequate play from those two spots, top five defense. Top five defense this year, almost guaranteed. That's how good this unit and personnel and coaching staff is. They have all the tools. If Hufunga can just be average, is he going to make mistakes? Yes. Is he going to get beat deep? Yeah, probably going to happen once or twice. But can he make up for that with this consistent in tackling and making sure getting player getting teams off the field on third down? He's a third down menace that whose awareness is off the charts, instincts off the charts. And that's what I'm excited to see. Love Hufunga, number 17 for us this year. I expect big things. Oh, man, I hope uh, he stays this high for next year's countdown. Want to take a moment just to say thank you to Anthony and Josh, executive producers of this entire series. And for us over here at the 40 Hours Rush, we're just going to keep counting them down.